Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, I am going to teach you CSS step by step. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to understand a lot of things like selector, properties, and values in CSS. So let's get started and see how it goes. Welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, I am going to teach you how to understand and use box model in CSS. I'm going to show you everything step by step. Let's get started. The first thing we have to do is to create the boxes we are going to be using and we create the parent box div. Let's just call this one class parent box so that you will see everything we are doing easily. Parent box and we now have children. Let's call them class child box so let's have multiple of child box and we have to duplicate that to do it so copy let's 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 copy and paste it so we have like three already and let's say that is okay like that now i want to show you how box model works so that you can understand it the first thing i want you to understand is this element here is the parent and this ones are the children of this parent element let's make use of css to understand box model because box model is all about css let's get there and do something the first thing we want to do is to select this element with their class name Let's do class name, um, parent box. You know the dot notation, as I have explained before, is used to access or select the uh, element with parent box class name. The class name of this element is parent box, so we selected it with this CSS, and let's tie it, and then we set its border to one pixel solid red so that we can see its border you can see that you can see it here can you see that so we have uh, the border of the box and let's give it height so that we can know how big it is let's make it with um let's say 400 pixel and height let's make it 400 pixel also so that we can understand what we want to do you see that and let's now select the child element we call it child box so you see that let's make them the same color but different size let's make their width and height 100 pixel so that they will be smaller than their parents you see that so now that we have seen the boxes the parent and its children now let's explain what box model is all about in box model we always talk about margin padding box sizing and some other things let's start with padding if you come here you will realize that there is no space up here and left here between the parent and its children if we now want to create a space between the content of this parent with its children then we are going to use padding the space created within an element in relation to its content is called padding so let me show you that so that you can see it parent padding let's make it 50 pixels so that you can see it properly boom can you see that you see that the space from here to here this is the parent this is the border box of the parent so the space we add to it from here to here here to here is called padding from here to here is called padding you see that so that is padding that is padding we can have padding left padding right padding bottom and padding left so this one here here to here is padding left here to here is padding um top and here to here is padding uh right and here to here is padding bottom so we can write them separately instead of writing it together like this by using this one we write all of them together we write 
padding left, padding right, padding bottom, and padding left or top. So we write everything together like this. But you can see that it's everywhere. This one became bigger. But there are times when we don't want the same padding around the left or right. So then we can write them like this. Padding left. Let's make it 50 pixels. So it will be the same thing. Padding top. We make it something different so that we can see the difference. Padding top. Let's make it 30 pixels. So it will be smaller. Boom! Can you see that? It is now smaller than before. So you can see that this one is still the same thing, but top is smaller than before. Now let's add padding to the right. But in this case, you cannot see it because we have a lot of space here already by the uh, right. So we cannot see it. But what we will notice is that the size of this box will be bigger than before. Let's add padding right. Padding right. Let's give it something big so that it will be noticeable. In the browser let's say 200 pixel so boom can you see that it's now very very big so you know something has been added why is it that it's affecting the size of the element yes we will talk about box sizing later in this lesson so that you can see how it works but let's finish this path so you can see that so we can add to the bottom too let's say party party bottom and let's make it 200 pixels so that you can see it too Pew! you can see it's bigger right so now this is how to do it separately and for you to now use the other one there's something i should remind you let's say padding 50 pixel you see that 50 pixel for all of the sides right but what if you want to write it like this and you want to give them different value so we can just do top 50 pixel right 30 pixel bottom 40 pixel or let me make it 200 pixels so that you can see it right also 200 pixels so that you can see it and um left let's make it 50 pixel so that it will look like before Pew! you can see this one is bigger and this one they are still the same thing so if we make top 30 like before it will be back to normal boom you see that so for you to remember this side you know this one is top this one is right this one is controlling the bottom and this one is controlling the left then how do you remember you can remember by writing trbl and pronounce it as trouble so t stands for top r stands for right b stands for bottom and l stands for left so once you remember that you will know how to arrange this thing by doing just say trouble and try to remember trb trouble pronounce it as trouble we have done that let's talk about margin then what is margin margin has to do with the space outside you know this one now the space outside of it right to the left outside of it is margin let's add margin to the building so that you can see it you can give it margin and just make it 50 pixels so that you can see it too Boom! can you see that you know it is this the, the space it has from outside of it right the space it creates outside of it that is margin outside of it margin you see that to the left to the top to the bottom to the right to the left by doing this we say to the top 50 pixel to the right 50 pixel to the bottom 50 pixel and to the left 50 pixel so we can do it like we did for padding too we can just do top 50 pixel um right 50 pixel bottom 50 pixel and left 50 pixel or we can change it if we want to change it you might say yeah it's still the same thing but let's change that of the left to make sure that we have different result boom you can see this one is smaller so margin is always the space an element creates between itself and an external element or its parent right because this one has parent body so it is moving away from the body 
So that is it. The space it creates for itself and its children is padding. So like this one now, the space they give themselves, right? Is also margin. Let's give them so that we can understand margin in their own case too. So I just see child box margin 50 pixel. You see it everywhere. Boom! You see that? Margin top, margin left, margin right, margin bottom. They, they have everything. And uh, we can change it to like top 50 pixel, right 20 pixel, bottom 20 pixel. And uh, left 40 pixel. You see, they are different, right? Left is smaller, so that's it. For you to see it properly, let me change that of the left to something smaller so that you can see it properly. You see that? So that is it. Now, another thing I want you to understand that for padding and margin, if you just want to deal with top, you want the size of top to be the same thing with size of bottom. You can just do 50 pixel for the top and for the bottom and 20 pixel for the right and for the left. So if you just put two value here, so that is how it will do it. Even for padding, the same thing will happen. So if you just put 50 pixel, just two values here, in this case, then it will make this one for both top and bottom, and to make it for both left and right. So if you do it for padding too, the same thing will happen. So that's it. Boom! You see, nothing has changed, and you can do margin just like we did for padding, so that we can just give the value separate, like margin top fifty pixel, margin left. 50 pixel margin right 50 pixel and margin bottom 50 pixel you see that so it's still the same thing right so that is how to make use of margin and padding now the next thing we want to talk about is box sizing why do we have to use box sizing so I will explain. So let's get started now. Okay, let's go back here. So we just have, let's remove everything here already so that you understand how to make use of it. So now if I had padding and I'll do padding uh, top 50 pixel, padding right 100 pixel and padding bottom 50 pixel let's say 100 pixel and padding left 50 pixel boom yes but something should come to your mind why is it that the element is now bigger than it was before right we say that its size should be 400 but it's now bigger than 400 why is it like that because it adds 50 pixel to this to 400 by the by the top so it is a bit bigger by the left by the right by the bottom so it's now become bigger than normal but what if you only want it to be exactly like you know you don't want this thing to be bigger than it is but you still want all this padding all this magic without making this box bigger than it was you want it to be exactly 400 pixel so now we are operating with what is called content box content refers to where elements can be the inner parts that elements can be and border is just this line right now we are operating with content box that means anytime we use padding margin margin and padding will be added to the width of the content area and that will make the content area that is the total box bigger than its normal size or normal width or normal height but we don't want that to happen if you don't want that to happen we change it to border box so how do we do that that is why when you see some uh css you see something like asterisk so asterisk is meant to select all the elements on the page it selects all the elements on the page so and um, we can now 
style all of the elements on the page we are doing this because we want the box sizing to affect all of the elements on the page and let's set it now box sizing you now change it to border box automatically if you don't set this browser will come with content box and that was why we are having the issue but you can see boom it has changed right once i change this one to, to border box it has changed to normal so the size is what we expect you can see that but if i remove this border box you know it will be bigger again you see that it's bigger so if i change it to content box it will still be the same thing because it is just the normal one the default right but if i want it to be the size i want then i change it to border box then boom you can see it's not normal and we still have the padding we have everything so that is how to use box sizing and that is what we always talk about box model so some people can just show you box model here we have it here if you check uh if you check here you see it here so this is what is what is mostly used for box model so this one part is referring to the main content area and this referring to the padding and this referring to the border and this referring to margin so it's just like what i have explained to you can see it is showing here it shows us the margin we have and here the border and here the padding and here the content area so for this parent element it shows you you can see you can see that it shows you the blue you see content area so the padding is the white area okay it has padding so padding is white and the margin is red it's telling you everything so that's it and that's how to this one is just for you to visualize it to see it so that's how to go about it so let me quickly give you a bonus and i will talk about border radius border radius refers to the curve edges here by the left by the top this is top bottom right you know this is top left top right bottom left bottom right those curve edges those corners are what we call border radius let's give the parent box border radius border radius and seats uh border border radius and we give it 10 pixel you see something like curve you see something like curve corners and let's see boom can you see that this side they are now corner you see that so that is how to use it and um, you can also use them separately like padding like change this one to like 50 pixel and change this one to like um 30 pixel and change this one to like 70 pixel so that they have this different thing so just like we use for you see that you can create different shapes with this just like we did for uh padding and margin you can use the same value like this you can also use two to mean both top and bottom and both left and right like we did for margin you see that so see the same thing can you see that this and this are equal and this and this are equal so that is border radius you can do also do border top left radius so let make it 50 pixel border top left you go to the top left you can see it has changed it so we create another one border bottom left radius make it 30 pixel so that you can see it you see that and let's create other ones just if you want to do it one by one maybe there is a reason to do that because you don't want to create for this side and this side you just want to create for this side you can do it the other way we, we, we do it the other time or you can just use them one by one like i am doing right now you have done top left okay top right top right this, this side top right here top by the right i have what bravo let's do border uh top it should be bottom but our bottom right radius bottom right this is bottom right let's save it make it uh, 20 pixel and see what happens see. boom can you see that yes it's now working everything is working properly as we want it so it is working properly we don't have to you know talk about anything again we have done it we are done with box model 
in CSS and I hope you understand this. So why do I have to teach you this? I have to teach you this so that you will know how to properly space elements from other and how to create spaces in an element in relation to its children. Those things are very, very important when you are building web pages and that is why I have to show you this because most of the time things what you do will always be about moving them arranging them and things like that and these things are very important when you are dealing with those things those activities so that is why I have to teach you this that is it and we have come to the end of this lesson I'll see you in another lesson bye for now see you don't forget a true Roma never surrender. Don't give up. Welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, I will be teaching you how to use selectors in CSS. You can just call it CSS selectors. We have all of these elements here. We have parent box, we have children. How do we select them in CSS? So let's give some of these things ID. To, so that we can use that one to ID just give it a uh, parents let's just make it parents and let's give one of the children ID let's give this one ID let's just give it um, ID give it my name you know okay let's give it something meaningful let's keep let, let's give it um, uh, let's make it let's let just give it a name box I can't think about a good name now but let's give it box so so okay now let's select them with css and see the power of css let's talk about universal selector universal selector it's used to select all the elements on the web page so if you want to select all the elements in the web page and add some styles to them then we can use this asterisk sign so anything we apply here will affect all the elements on the page how would that happen okay let me just go back to uh some already baked code you can see we have something here before right so for you to see it properly how uh universal selector works so this one selects everything on the page and whatever i add to this side it will affect all of these ones here you can see on the screen for you to see it in action this one selects all the elements on the page and we use it to create box sizing border box as you see in some other tutorials on this channel or in other videos for this tutorial you will see how it was properly explained but what you have to know that this one is used to select all the elements on the page and we use this one to add border box to all of them so in this case there is something here you can see that there is always a space here there is a space here there is a space up here and most of the time you don't need that space right and always like that that is what we always have there's always extra margin extra padding anytime you create an element but you don't want that when you are working in the real world and that is why you always see something like box sizing border box padding zero up here padding zero and margin zero so we set everything to default so that we will not have them initially you can see we don't have any margin here we don't have any padding here so you can see that it has affected these ones too so because because we are dealing with a universal selector so whatever we put here will affect all the elements on the page then let's talk about element selector you can select html element with their tags so for example i can select this div or the div here on the page with their tag i can just say div um with 400 pixel height 400 pixel and border so we have one pixel one pixel solid red so that you can see it you can see that we have them here the parents and the children this is the parents but because they have the same size that is why the children moved out of it you can see that they have tiny border and the parents has bigger 
border because another child is in it but other cannot be inside it because they have the same size that's why they are outside so that is it we select all the div elements on the page and we apply this to them what if you want to select with another thing because we want the parent to be different from the children then you cannot use the div element because it will not make sense you want to select them differently based on different properties different classes different criteria so we have other form of selectors in css you can use and that takes us to another one and we call it class selector and it means we can select the element with its class name and uh, let's just look the class name of the element parent box and we can just do dot dot means we want to select an element with its class name we want to use dot in css that is what you mean just say parent print box so we have selected this element like this this one so we can add css to it as we want let's just say with 400 pixel height 400 pixel and border one pixel solid red so that we can see it Choom! you can see here is it and we can also select the children so what do we mean by class you know that different elements can have the same class they can belong to the same class so these are the children we can select all of them by their class name so with with their class name let's just do this dot child box just do with 100 pixel and height 100 pixel and uh, let's just do um border it's just one pixel solid red boom you can see you can see there can you see that so we, we have them on the screen so we have selected the children we have added the color and width to them now we have selected parent box and the and its children with their class names then we can do something else by using id selector so let us use id selector you can see here we have uh, this one it's on, it is only this one that has id then we can select it with its id so that id is meant for this one alone you cannot have another id that is box here this is what i mean don't get it wrong we cannot have this one id here and if we have id this one cannot be box because id is identity and identity is always unique it cannot be the same as that of another person it's like saying your fingerprint is like mine so it doesn't make sense so this one must have different id it can be both right that one is still correct so but id cannot be the same thing for different elements but class can be different because for instance class can be different maybe you are a software developer i'm a software developer that's another class but id your id is different from mine so id must be unique so that is why this we cannot have the same id that's it then let's select it with its id let's just do if you want to select with id you use this ash and the name of the and the id box and let's select it um with so that we see it as something different let's give it bigger size and height 600 bigger height you see it's now bigger that's too much let's make it just 200 so that we can see it okay yeah it is bigger than the rest so you can see we only select just the one with id box and it doesn't affect other because id is unique so there's another thing i want you to remember i forgot to talk about in the class selector and let me just remind you you know in this case we can have multiple classes an element can belong to multiple classes you can also have this one to be something else we can add another class like um, main we can still add another one you know container so anything you do to this main main and container will affect this parent box let's try it 
let's try one of them selector container container and let's say um what can we do to it so that we can see it okay border radius so that you can see it's 50 pixel boom you can see it has affected it because it has the class to container so we can have multiple classes for an element but we cannot have multiple id don't do that so it is unique so we cannot have multiple id but we can have multiple classes so that's it then let's talk about uh another thing you you will use often descendant selector how do you select something as descendant you can in in this case these ones they are descendant of this one so if you want to select this one with descendant selector how do you do that you can just do class parent um box dot child child box the meaning of this is that you are selecting the child box that is inside parent box this is important in case we have another element that has child box so maybe we have a container box right and that container box also has a child box it means it will not affect the child box that is inside the container box because we have prefixed it with parent box that is if it is only in parent box that is when it can select the child box so it cannot select it if it is in another element that does not have this parent box class that is what we mean so it must be a descendant of this before it can be selected as child box so then let's try it so that you can see it border so border one pixel solid uh, red boom can you see that so it selected all of the three elements inside it so that's it so we can give them height or we can give them width and other things if we like so we have selected the child box which is inside of parent box that is the meaning child box is inside is a descendant of parent box that is what we mean by descendant selector so you know that i wrote space here and this space means that we use space to separate them because if you don't separate them like this if you do it like this right what does that mean that one is different it means that it has both parent box and child box you know class that's the meaning if you do it like this it must have a boot parent box class you can see this one has explained it here you can see parent box and child box so if you do it like this that, that's what it means that element must have both parent box class and child box class what do i mean by that i mean that for us to select this one if you do it like that it means that this one must have both parent box and child box you can see that you can see this one has a parent box and child box right as class and whatever so you can see it select just it so if you go back here and give it a space it will select all of them you see that if you can see the reason is that this one has parent box and child box as its class it means that you are selecting any element that has these two classes parent box and child box it must have both parent box and child box as its class and the only one that has it is this one right so that is why it is the one that is selected if there is no space but if there is space it will select all of them boom you see that so that is it that is how it works yes now let's talk about child selector this greater than is used to denote that you want to select child so if you want to select the child of the parent box then we can use that let's just do class parent box parent box and diff that means we want to select all the diff elements inside of parent box that are children of parent box so we are selecting the child right the child of parent box that is diff so if it is anything that is diff will be selected that's what this one we do let's just say border one pixel solid red you see it's, it has selected all of them but if this one has 
you know let's give okay the one that has uh, id so let's select that one alone with id id box so it's select just that one you see that it said just just that one so this means we are just selecting the child of the parent box you can use all of these css the selectors in javascript query selector so you can use them and then let's move on to uh another one this one is used to select the next sibling to the current one the next sibling to the current one so how do we do that let's select box box reverse to this one this one here right because it has id box then we want to select the one that is next to it this is, which is this one so you can now do next plus div so it will select the one that that is after the box the element with id box so it will select the one the div element border so that you can see it one pixel solid red you see that boom you can see it has selected the last one so that is what is called adjacent sibling selector that is the next sibling to this one here this one is the current one you selected and you want to select its sibling that is next to it that's what this one does so we select the diff which is this one in this case the next thing is general sibling selector we want to select the sibling or the sibling of a particular element all we just have to do is we select the element itself let's say box in this case we have box and we want to select all its siblings like this one now all of them that are, that belong to the same parent you know all of them they belong to this one so let's select all of the you know siblings of this one so anyone any element that is a sibling to this one this one this one they will be selected so all of the siblings will be selected and we use this side to do it you see that i just say diff any diff element or we can also use a class child box so it will select all of the siblings of the box so that is what is called general sibling selector and let's just do um border one pixel solid red and see what happens do i see that we just get one because the only one that is next to that that is sibling in that case it's just um child box right but let's move this one down let's see what will happen you see now so so you can see it has selected both of them that are next to it so that is it that's it but if we move it to the bottom let's see what will happen see box is now the one we, we, that we are selecting is sibling is now at the bottom let's see if we, to select them you can see it doesn't select them or if we move it to the top so what it's doing is that we select this one then all of the next siblings to it will be selected so this is the box and all of its siblings will be selected it's working so let's move it downward and see if it is still work so it doesn't work so it has to be up them so we select this box and any other siblings that are next to it so this one this one they are next to it it will be selected boom that's why we have this so now we are done with uh selector now we are done with the selector for this tutorial i'll see you in another tutorial bye for now see you understanding css length unit in this case we have in which is inches one inch stand for 96 pixel and 2.5 centimeter we also have pixel one pixel stand for one over 96 of an inch which is a relative value we also have pt which is point point is equal to one over 72 of one inch so now let's talk about m when you use m you are talking in relation to the font size of the element you will get to understand font size later but this one is just to inform you about what the m length value is and we also have rem rem is also relative to font size of the root element root element is 
your HTML tag. So that is the root element. And we also have VW. VW is also a relative uh, value and uh, it is relative to 1% of the viewpoint. In this case, one VW means 1% of the width of the viewpoint. And in this case, this is just the height, right? This one is width and this one is height. So it's also relative. If you say one VH, it means relative to 1% of the height of the viewpoint. So what is the viewpoint? We set the viewpoint in our HTML earlier on. So viewpoint is where you are viewing it, right? So you are calculating what you are setting based on the viewpoint. So the viewpoint determine the size. That means it is scalable. It can respond based on the size of the screen. If the viewpoint is bigger, it gets bigger. If the viewpoint is smaller, it gets smaller. So that is why we use that. And we also use percentage. Percentage means relative to the parent element, as I have explained parents. When a parent has a child and we want to set maybe the width of the child, right? If we use percentage, that means we are setting the size of the child in relation to the parent element, in relation to the size of the parent element. That is how to use percentage in CSS as a length unit. We have a lot of CSS properties and their values here, and I will just quickly walk you through this before you get into real practice. This is just to introduce you to them before you make use of them. In this case, I will quickly introduce you to the commonly used CSS properties and their values. So we have background. Your background has to do with background of anything, as it sounds. So we can set background image of anything that is we had image as its background and we can set the position of that background maybe to top center left right or set it with a pixel we can add a position to any background and we can set the background size maybe cover or contain if it is cover it means if you add an image to the background of a particular element the image will be cropped to fit into that element but if it is contained, the image will be full in size no matter how big or small that element is. So content will maintain the size of the image we use. But if you use cover, if it is necessary, it will crop some part away. So that is the difference. And we have repeat. Normally, when you, you add images, they might be repeated. And most of the time, you don't want them to be repeated. You can set repeat to several values like no repeat, repeat, etc. We have a background origin. So you can set it padding box, content box, and other. We have background clip. You can set it border box, etc. You can set the background attachment. So it can be scroll, fixed, or others, depending on what you have or what you want. So this is just to familiarize you with what we have as CSS properties. So we are going to use them in details later. So we have background color too. You use it to set color of a background. It's as simple as that. And we also have margin. So you know what margin is. You don't need to actually get it right now because I will explain in details later. But let me just tell you the property and its values. So like this one, we have a margin here and we can set margin top margin right margin bottom and margin left that is what we do here that is just what we are just introducing you to at the same time we have padding and we can set padding top padding right padding bottom padding left we also have a text value most of the time when you want to interact with text these are the common thing you always use you set the color and we use line height we set line spacing we set text align we set text decoration, set text indent, text transform, etc. Those are the things we use when we are dealing with text. You get to understand everything. And in this case, I want you to understand possible positions and alignments for or within an element. Every screen has top, center, and bottom. Like on this screen now, we have top, 
center and bottom right but if you want to describe this side what will you call it it will be what top left right this side is top left and this side is what top center and this one is what top right and if you move here this one will be what center left and this side will be center center and this side will be center right and if you come here this one will be what bottom left and this one will be bottom center and this one will be bottom right that is what i want you to understand with these ones so once you understand that it will be easy for you to position and you know use some things like border if you want to set one part of the border so these are the properties for border to just set the border button right this one is for that if you want to now set border bottom color color of that border at the bottom and here it means border bottom width you want to set the width of the border border bottom so we have this like this and that is how we have it we also have left border left we have border right we have border top that was why i told you earlier on about top left right and bottom center center all those things that is why that is important you'll be able to understand when you see them let's move on this is just to introduce you to all of them so that it will not be like a magic by the time we are making use of them to build things because what is really important what is the most important thing when you are writing code is when you use it you learn anything by doing it if you want to learn things you make use of them so we are going to make use of them but we just have to introduce you to them for you to have a proper understanding that is why i am introducing you to this stay connected we want to talk about positioning we have all these things like static sticky fake fixed relative absolute we can also use offsets like top left right bottom all of those things we use them to position elements in html those things are important and at the same time we have layout there are so many ways to deal with layouts we can use float we can float to right float to left when we float you can clear float on both sides or anyhow you want it you can just set clear i hope you get that we use that to create structure before the advent of both flexbox and um, grid after that we have flexbox so you should know about flexbox we have flexbox and we have grid we have um, list properties all of these things so these things are important for you but you will learn everything by practice and i will add it you download it so that you check them yourself so this is just a support or a guide for you we don't have to waste time on it hey have you been struggling to learn and build projects with javascript Oh no, you too can cope. People like you have been struggling to understand and build projects with JavaScript because we have been learning with the wrong resources that make everything so difficult to learn. And there is nobody to be there for you anytime you are stuck. That is why I have put together my long experience of working with JavaScript and I also took a year of my life to provide solutions to the problem beginners always face in learning and building projects with JavaScript. Now you can learn with a tested and trusted program that makes use of simple examples and amazing illustrations that make everything so easy to learn. And my team and I will always guide you, mentor you and always be there for you anytime you are stuck. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in this post right now to start learning JavaScript the easy way. I will teach you JavaScript to be unstoppable. See you soon.